So now that we've introduced linear momentum and angular momentum, let's go back and think about Newton's second law and see again how these momentum quantities are really what Newton's laws are talking about. So if we think about the translational version of Newton's second law, that the net force acting on some object is equal to mass times its acceleration, well again I know the acceleration is just the, the derivative with respect to time of the velocity vector. When I take that mass term, pulled it out because it's constant, well if it's constant I can tuck it back into the derivative, which means that I have the derivative of the linear momentum with respect to time. So what Newton's second law tells me is that if the vector sum of the forces acting on the object is zero, then the linear momentum of your object doesn't change. It's constant with respect to time. If I think about the rotational version of Newton's second law, right, we said that was that the net torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. And again, we can play the same game where we say, well, I know that the angular acceleration is just the derivative with respect to time of the angular velocity. And of course, if I take this i and tuck it back into the derivative, then I've got the derivative with respect to time of i omega, and that, of course, is the angular momentum. So what the rotational version of Newton's second law is really telling you is that if the vector sum of the torques acting on an object about some particular pivot is zero, then the angular momentum of that object about that same pivot is constant. Both of these versions of Newton's second law, both the translational version and the rotational version, are really interested in keeping track of how forces act to change both linear and angular momentum for extended objects. So we reframed Newton's second law and said, oh, well now that I'm thinking of it as the net force is equal to the time rate of change of the linear momentum, that's a derivative equation. I can turn around and change that into an integral equation and what that gave me was the impulse momentum theorem that said that the change in momentum of your object is going to be equal to some integral over time of the net force times dt. This of course told us that how the net force acts on an object over time that defines the net impulse exerted on the object and that's going to equal the change in the object's linear momentum. Well, we can do the same thing with the rotational version of Newton's second law. The net torque equals the time rate of change of the angular momentum. That's a derivative equation. I can turn that derivative equation into an integral equation, and that integral equation tells me that the change in the angular momentum of the object is equal to some integral in time of the net torque acting on the object times dt. What this integral expression is giving us then is it's giving us a way to define the net angular impulse exerted on the object and that's going to be equal to the change in the object's angular momentum. Because we can think about the net force acting on the system and break that up into the sum of the internal forces plus the sum of the external forces, that when we wanted to think about a system, really all we, all we cared about was the net external force acting on the system, and that if, that net, if the external impulse acting on the system was zero, then that meant the linear momentum of your system was conserved. Same thing's true for our rotational version of Newton's second law. That if we think about this integral expression now and define it for a system of rotating objects, then again we can break up this net torque into the sum of internal torques which will cancel out plus the sum of external torques. That's all that's left and so we've got that the change in the angular momentum of our system is equal to the integral with respect to time of the net external torque exerted on our system times dt. What this means is if the angular impulse exerted on our system by external torques, so the external angular impulse, when that is zero, then the angular momentum of the system is conserved, which obviously leads us into conservation of angular momentum.